Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Stella Finds Us show. <laughs> Today, we are here with someone very special. Her name is Mariana Goodall, correct? Yes. yes. And she has a company called Hibiscus Linens that you've probably heard of. She makes exquisite things. And we are so honored to have her on the show. She's going to talk a little bit about what she does about her company, and then she's going to walk us through a craft. But she also just told me right before we started recording, <laughs> she is actually opening up a store of one-of-a-kind, fabulous things from the throughout the globe. It's going to be a beautifully curated one of a kind space in Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, I'm blown away. I really am just stunned. So we're really looking forward to that. But back to today's subject. Mariana, do you want to tell, or Delia, do you want to talk to her? But you want to tell us about your company, Mariana? Of course. First of all, thank you, ladies, for having me. This is truly an honor. I love hanging out with Delia. So it's always a fun time. So thank you for inviting me to your fun time today. <laughs> um, my company is Hibiscus Linens. We make, we're, we make hand embroidery pieces. You can find in our studio dinner napkins, cocktail napkins, towels, but also baby clothing, hand embroidery bows for you and your little ones, kind of like all of these little things. But one thing that I have been doing a lot of during this time is just creating little projects that you can replicate at home. So actually our Instagram is full of little projects for your little ones to do while they homeschool, for you to tackle in four minutes. If you have four minutes at night and you want to find a little bit of calm and creativity in your day, whatever you want. I'm just trying to put information out there. So it was such an honor to hear that you all were also in the same path of creating just little experiences for everyone um, with what you have available at home. Yes. So right. thank you. Of course, it's such an interesting time that we're all in and we love nothing more than banding together and supporting <laughs> other female founders in our community. So on your Instagram, that's at Hibiscus Linens. Yes. yes. And then, so we'll put her website and Instagram in the description below. Thank you so much. Of course, so what craft are we doing today? So uh, today we were talking about the importance of staying connected with those that you cannot be with. So we were thinking about using a combination of watercolor, and hand embroidery and needle, which is thread and needle, to make a nice little note. What we were thinking is you can use any envelope you might have at home and you can cut a little piece of paper that fits exactly inside your envelope and we can create a little note for somebody that you really care for. So the way we're going to like, dazzle this little piece of paper. I'm sorry. It's by just creating a little bit of watercolors. As you might know, I love flowers. There's actually a song in Spanish that says that whenever you are alone or those that you love are not around you, you should surround yourself with flowers because the smell of flowers carry all the good vibes and all of the good wishes of those that just care about you. So I think that is why it's very important to always have flowers around. And if you're like me and you cannot keep flowers alive, use water, color them into paper. I mean, sometimes that's all we can aim for and that is okay. <laughs> oh, will you tell me that song and we'll put it in the description below so everyone can hear it? Uh, of course. It's, it's a song by Fonseca and it's called I brought you flowers. Aww. Okay. okay. That's so mm -hmm. We're so happy and sharing that with us. Oh, I love that song. It's, um, <laughs> it's just a, it's a fun little uh, Latin song, but it, yes. I guess it's important and more in times like right now to keep on feeling connected to those we love and admire and appreciate. So let's start with our little card. What I was thinking is we can write a little note and then we can do kind of like a little ivy that comes up to two flowers. The idea is that all the greenery is just going to be watercolor and it's actually in the little leaves where we are going to do a little bit of hand stitching on top, all right? 
So I have this little watercolor set that I got from Amazon. <laughs> Nothing special. And I am going to get myself doing this. Let me, I'm going to move you all a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I always have a tea towel around because I'm messy. So. <laughs> We like to make a mess too. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of messy, so I always have a tea towel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a little line at the bottom. I'm going to use a little, I'm going to try to keep my greens kind of muted so they can match my envelope and it looks like it was always meant to be. So All right. Was the envelope green to begin with or did you paint it? No, the envelope was green from the beginning. Okay, matching. Okay, great. Yes, yeah, so you so can the, the first thing I'm going to do is just a little line that is going to be the structure, all right? Everything is going to grow from that main ivy. So once you have your first ivy, you can start working in making little petals. So from here, I'm going to make kind of like a, if you were doing a little bow. Can we see that? Yes. Like a little part, exactly. Every leaf is supposed to look, every two leaves can look like a little heart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. Aww. There's other people that are better at watercolor, I promise, but this is a little, a little something for you to do. I know, and we can put the link to the products like that color, the watercolor palette in the description below as well in case somebody needs, they don't have that. Oh, amazing. That's amazing. Let me. So here are the little stems that will take me to my flowers, all right? Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this symbolizes so much. It can symbolize personal growth, or all yes. planting seeds, all sorts of things. I think the most important thing with all of these is just to be open to the poss possibility to learn something new. You know, like I, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to be thinking this is the best watercolor they have seen <laughs> in their life, but I'm okay with that because it's about just doing something for yourself Look at that. Look at the little girl. Oh, that's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> it's just doing something to create a little creative time for yourself and maybe something meaningful for someone in your life. So, so after doing, I always like to do first the little bud and then I am going to go and add the leaves. I never do the leaves all the way because you never know where your flower is going to go. And one beautiful thing about doing greenery and flowers is that um, nature is kind of crazy. And there can be a big flower next to a little flower next to a flower that looks like that. And it's <laughs> fine. So I feel like it's good for me to not be yes. so uniform. Oh. So now I'm going to just add little details around so there's more leaves closer to my flowers. All my collections are all about adding a little bit of greenery and blooms into things. So look at that. It's a little, a little something. And I added the last couple of leaves. That's really pretty. And now, just to make it super special, we're going to stitch on top of the little um, fuchsia, little crosses, all right? Yes. So, when you're stitching on paper, it's very hard if you just want to go straight into the paper with your thread. It's just too much going on. So what I'm going to do is, this is a thin needle, and that thin needle is the one I'm going to use for stitching. But before we get started, I am going to poke all the holes, all right? Okay. So we are going to use our towel to create like a little padded section. And now you can take all your frustration into the paper. <laughs> and I am going to start poking every corner, every end of those little crosses I painted before. Wow. 
wow, that makes perfect sense. But I'm gonna. This is. Well, that's why we have to create videos. <laughs> uh, and let me do the other. This is also good because it gives also the paper a little bit of time to dry. Mm -hmm. So it's not like all. Oh. I mean, what a surprise and what a treasure it would be to, to receive this, a note. Besides right? getting the note, but this beautiful, it turns it into a treasure that they surely would keep. Yes, and there's a lot of, um, and, and, and the other thing is, other than being a treasure or something that you can keep, it's something that is going to bring you a smile the moment you receive it, you know, because it's just like this friend that is really not that into watercolor, maybe it's not the most creative one, can still do this, okay? So I'm going to take now some pink thread. And what I'm going to do is cut a piece that is the same length as my arm. To your elbow or up? Uh, I always do my entire arm. Okay. And again, because the paper already has the space we have to stitch on, we cannot use all six strands of thread. Right. So I am going to take two of these threads out so it's thinner. It, is not as thick and it will make everything more simple. All right, once we do this, we cut them pretty and we thread. We are, our needle and our thread are ready. I am going to make a knot in one of the ends. So is it four threads? Say that again. How many threads left? How many I'm using, I'm using two. Two, you pulled out. Okay. Yes, I pull four out and I put them on the side and I am going to work with two threads right now. Makes sense. Yeah. So, I don't know if you're able to see, but now all of my paper is poked. Okay? Yeah. All, all the paper is poked and the next thing I need to do is just find a hole and start doing every single cross the way you learned to do cross stitch when you were a child, just from one side to the other. That will be my first cross, let me show you. So it's like a little X. A little X. So beautiful! That's it. So then from there, you just have to look at the back of the paper, find your next cross and go over it. And just keep on going like this. You can hear that I'm actually, if you pay attention, I am actually not damaging the paper at all. I'm just going through all of the holes I had already created. And that's it. Yes. So great. I don't think grown ups spend enough time being creative. Well, I hope they try because right now is the only way we're going to grow. That's right. While we're at home. That's exactly right. Just have a project like this and create something of beauty. You get to do it for a living. But, you know. Yes. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to be buying my cards. Anytime. Oh, but, you know, so many women think, what would my husband think if he came in and I was painting? You know, yeah. or you know, my kids. The, of course, then they would want to do it too, which is which is great. It's a great family thing. It is a great thing, and it's also about just putting yourself out there. I mean, like I think there's a lot of days where we think to, that to tackle a new hobby, we have to have all of these special things. But actually, if you have little ones, there's probably already watercolors at your home. Sure. And I'm sure there's some kind of like your scarbot paper somewhere and you can give it a try. And it can be a little flower or it can be something you see from your window. It can be your favorite pattern. It can just be little lines. I mean, like it can be whatever you want. Um, it can just be, I, I have a friend that is, loves like very sharp and geometrical things. So. I did a card for her and I actually just painted the four corners. I just put like a little bit of watercolor and it was very cute and it was not very um, time consuming or anything like that. So let me just finish 
this one. And we can see how it's going. I think I got excited. I was supposed to do only two flowers, but so like, three came out. Because there's three of us, I thought we needed three flowers. So we all felt represented in my beautiful little card. I keep thinking about the people that would receive it. You know, like if it is a card and the child writes a note and it goes to the grandmother and, you know, someone. Or for teacher appreciation day, you know. Teachers that haven't seen their kids in a long time. Or even your mom, because, you know, they were talking about because the, the kids weren't in school. So no Mother's Day cards were made at school. All the things that usually, you know, are made around Mother's Day, the, the, there was nothing like that this year for the, for the moms. Interesting. I didn't know that. But it, it actually makes sense. So yeah. the second flower, the one in the center, is done. Wow, that's beautiful. Yes, I love it. And you do have a little bit of jumping from one side to the other in the back, but it's not a big deal because it's very flat. Sure. So it will still look very, very pretty. That's really beautiful. Yeah. And then that's it. You can, you can just do this at night while you are watching a show, the, the show that Netflix recommends you to watch. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> or if you just want to be around like, Again, because everything is so simple to get around the house. I mean, everybody has a tea towel. Everybody has a little bit of water to use. Um, you can do it in the kitchen counter. I mean, it's just something that doesn't need any specific setup. And I think that's the beauty of this little project. You can create something meaningful out of things that are already around your house. So you have this, you have, you have the hibiscus linens business. And then you have, and then you also have a hotel, you have, your husband have a hotel in San Miguel? Yes, ma'am. So actually Hotel Amparo in San Miguel de Allende, um, it's our small luxury hotel or our boutique hotel, which has five suites. And it's all about creating some time to re-energize and recharge. It's super easy to get there and once you're there, you're ours. <laughs> like if you want someone to, if you want uh, our concierge service to take you anywhere around town, to go to the market and buy um, different elements to come back to the hotel and cook them yourself. Or if you need an afternoon or just massages and margaritas, like it's just kind of a place for people that are always in the go, 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 go. And then they need like, a couple of days to recharge that's kind of how it got uh, when I dreamt about it that's what it was and Amparo is my first name my my full name is actually Amparo Mariana and Amparo translates to English as shelter oh. so this hotel is your shelter in the heart of San Miguel de Allende and and also the Lisa Coleman and her family lived in San Miguel as well, and they have um, a clothing company, and that's this dress is from Recreo, and she's a friend of yours, they're friends of yours, and... Yes, she's fantastic. She has um, the most exquisite taste, and as I, like, if you ever can visit her house down there, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad you know each other. I'm so glad you know her, too. Oh, it's and I love that. Love that. So we are all done. Yes. Your card is going to have a little bit of texture because now it has the flowers. And you just have to turn it when you are done and you're going to make a little knot. Okay. And you can cut it away. And that's really kind of it. Your stitching is usually very flat, so it should not bother the envelope at all. Okay you should be able to put it inside and then close it and be done. Goodness, and it, I feel like it even takes it to the next level that not only did you watercolor, but also you embroidered it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a little project. And um, if you know your friend's favorite flowers or maybe if you want to make like little clouds, there's a lot of things you can do that could be that are going to be very organic and there's no way you can mess up. <laughs> right. 
right? That's the most important thing. One of the problems I feel like with art class is it's so subjective to get a grade and then, you know, some teacher tells you you did a pitiful job and then that person's creativity is right. forever suppressed. Yeah, grown-ups definitely would, would not even know where to begin to do this, but you've given them the steps and it's such an easy thing to do and it's you're creating something of beauty and you're sharing it with other people. It's magnificent. You are the sweetest person to come on our show and teach us how to do it and spread a little joy for other people. I really, really am very honored that you invited me. I mean, honestly, we're here for each other. And as they keep on saying, we're in this together. So if we can all, as a community, come up with ideas to stay engaged, stay connected, and stay creative, What's better than that? <laughs> it's so true. And I feel like we're all so very tired of li living digital lives. I have really been thinking about snail mail recently. And I think that we should never forget letters. Just literally sending a letter and surprising someone that you love, even whether mm -hmm. it's friends, family, anyone. I think that is always so very much appreciated because people never No, and you don't have you don't save emails. I have drawers <laughs> of all your of all your letters that you've written. You know yeah, and, that, and letters are going to help us mark the milestones of this year because we cannot be there in person because True. friends are getting married, friends are having birthdays. Like life is not stopping. Milestones are still happening. So having a little something, it will definitely add to the emotional value of the different milestones that will happen while we're all at home. That's yes. a very good point. All of the quarantine diaries and it's <laughs> how people know about history because of letters right. in the hundreds of <laughs> from those quarantines in the past. Right. So tell everyone again where they can find you. So you can find us on Instagram. <laughs> you can find us at Hibiscus Linens uh, as a website, hibiscuslinens.com. Or on Instagram is where you could definitely see more of the backstage of our studio, whatever we're working on, whatever is inspiring us. Sometimes like this morning, we share a little embroidery tip from a... Um, Reader's Digest from 1982. <laughs> so it's like whatever I find um, in the creative area that I think is interesting or gives me a little giggle, <laughs> I'll share it with you. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, well, this, I don't know if this adds value, <laughs> but someone at some point it was a, thought it was a good tip. So here we go. <laughs> let's, let's give it a try. Um, yeah, I think right now, even though we're living this digital life, we need to keep on growing and blooming as people. And as they say, you need to bloom where you are planted. And right now we're all planted at home. <laughs> so exactly let's just try that. to bloom here. Yes. yes. And also we would love it if you, whatever you create, if you take a picture of it, post it on Instagram and tag both at the style that finds us and also Hibiscus Linen so we can share on our page, we definitely want to see what you make and want to I love that. Too. Yes. That would be really I nice. love that. Perfect. Oh, thank you again for coming on. Oh, this is so, so much. And no, it was my you know, pleasure. When you come to Birmingham, we'll be Yes, I, I will definitely keep you posted of what's going on. So excited. Well, thank you everyone for tuning into the Sound of Mind the show, and we'll see you next week. Bye. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>